Alright, Travis Wayne did so. It says a lot when uh, John Gee's teacher condemns John Gee for not accurately presenting Egyptian on behalf of Mormons. And then to listen to uh, Robert K. Rittner, or Dr. Rittner, if he's that technical and needing to be called a doctor, <coughs> and listen to him going over facsimile 3 as I'm scamming over the, uh, the Mormon Stories, or yeah, Mormon Stories podcast. He, uh, John DeLynn did the second half with uh, Dr. Rittner. Uh, and so now I can go over a video review for you. But to hear him make rookie mistakes, <laughs> and he's condemning his pupil John Gee for making not just rookie mistakes, but blatant mistakes. It just shows how horrible of an Egyptologist John Gee is. And John Gee is supposedly the best the Mormons have. I mean, they have Mickelson or whatever his name is, who's brand new of several years now. <laughs> but uh, 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 the female Egyptologist from the school where he uh, spent two years to get a degree from, in Egyptology, and that's his, the bulk of his study, his two years at the Southern California University. I can't remember the name of the school. Uh, I think it was the one that I would have gone to if I'd stayed in Southern California and done the typical thing like my basketball coach wanted me to do. <laughs> I told him I was going to Rick's College. And he said, Rex, where's Rex? <laughs> Do they have a basketball team? <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, it's just, the church just humiliates themselves over and over and over again. It's because nobody is taking the seed from what they claim is the revelation from the Holy Ghost as they've misinterpreted Moroni chapter 10 verses 4 and 5 and don't apply the Book of Mormon's passage of Alma chapter 32 verse 28 where the word is just a seed and it's worthless and you know faith without works is dead seed without fruit is dead and so Mormons don't produce fruit so there is no education in Egyptian for Mormons so that Mormons can be knowledgeable about their own scripture when they go around the world saying, hey, church is true. <laughs> and instead, Mormons keep all this a secret because they just don't have any fruit. They don't know their own scriptures, they don't know their own doctrine, they don't know their own theology, they don't know nothing. And it's so frustrating to have moved to Utah back in 96, and to think that Mormons were more advanced, more knowledgeable in Mormonism, because this is the Mecca of Mormonville, and yet they're not. They've squandered the opportunities they've had. And where, as I, being an outsider Mormon, did the work necessary to show Joseph Smith was a translator. And so I deciphered Egypt, or Paleo Hebrew and then deciphered Egyptian picture glyphs. And that's why I'm able to listen to Rittner and go, Oh, no, 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 oh, did you just, oh, you did. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> just frustrating listening to this guy. And it proves the case that Egyptologists go into the field and they just learn the tradition. You know, they go through the motions, like going into high school and being forced to take a language course. 
So it's French or Spanish, sometimes German. Mormons get Hebrew. And oh my God. And they still, unbelievable. But still, you know, we just go through the motions. Oh yeah, parlez-vous français? Oh, très joli en fille. You know, we get to learn a little bit of things and we get to flatter women and score with them on dates, but I don't get to. <laughs> I see it in the movies, but uh, there's an Elvis movie, for example. Uh, uh, something girls, or girls something. Uh, but yeah, the, a French guy <laughs> was making the moves on one of the girls. That's why that came up to me. Or what came up to my mind. But uh, if you're going into the field just so that you can do a surface understanding, uh, you know, they learn the stories of Osiris, Set, and Horus, and they learn that, oh, okay, the Rosetta Stone. This is how it's supposed to be translated, and this is how it's supposed to be pronounced. And yeah, you can see him pause to pronounce the Egyptian words, and oh, wow, he can speak it. Wow. Because that's the first thing everybody asks me, whether it's Paleo-Hebrew or Egyptian. They go, oh, can you speak it? It's a dead language? <laughs> huh? <laughs> it's just... Oh dear God! <laughs> and so, I mean, he does get into the history, you know, the Germans have their pronunciation because they were the major ones involved, you know, Indiana Jones and the, the, Ark, of the, or the Lost, Ark of the Covenant or whatever. But, uh, I mean, I, I, my God. The, the big frustration, if you're wondering, he calls Isis, which, yes, normally she's Isis, but he says that she's identified by her symbol, the sun disk and the, the horns, the cow horns, and the, and the bovine horns, and, and I just, oh dear God, <laughs> oh dear God. I mean, that's not a rookie mistake. That's a major mistake. This is Hathor. That's her symbol. <laughs> and so, yes, Isis is the wife of Osiris, and yes, they do tend to interchange characters and such, but her symbol is the throne. That's her symbol, Isis. That's why she's called Isis, is because she's got the throne on the top of her head. There is no throne on the top of her head. It's Hathor's symbol, which means she's a mother goddess, Hathor. And so, yes, it's Osiris, because Osiris is portrayed in different ways according to the translation. And Rittner should know this, since he's a doctor. He doesn't. He fails. Oh, dear God. So that was the big one that I was screaming at him for. Uh, the other one was that he did, he said, oh, the, the crook of Osiris. You know, Osiris has the crook. And I'm going, he has the flail. You forgot the flail. I mean, that's not as big a deal. It is if he's intentionally not seeing the flail. <laughs> but it's right there. It shows. It's that that uh, triangle thing uh, that pointing up, you know, right next to the cloth or right up over the cloth. It's right there. Anybody can see it. And he just... He did, doesn't mention it, and so I'm concerned only because he then goes on to say that it's Isis rather than Hathor. And yes, Hathor and Isis are interchangeable, 
but he doesn't make mention of that. He just says, oh, this is Isis, uh, because it's her symbol to have the horns and the sun disk. No, it's not. That's Hathor. Urgh. But, uh, I, I mean, and that's the only reason why I'm suspicious about him caught missing the flail is because he made such a major mistake on Isis Hathor. But yeah, I, maybe it's just because I deciphered Egyptian picture glyphs and he didn't. That I caught this, that I understand it, and, and why Egyptologists don't see this and they just don't care. scream. I want to scream. <sighs> to make such mistakes as a doctor, I just again shows the, the flawed system in the fields of scholarship. You know, he had to be approved in order to become a, a doctor. Uh, he had to do a thesis paper, he had to you know, go before a board of the school to do a report, interview, or whatever it was that was done at the particular school on the topic and then be interrogated so that he was supposed to know things and he's supposed to be in conformity with tradition. He can't dare do his own research because uh, un in a, not approved and there would be more scrutiny involved. And, uh, it's, uh, so, I mean, for those kinds of errors, and then to then see him condemn John Gee as just, wow, John Gee is a nobody. <laughs> He's worthless to the church. And John Gee is the one who gave the church Historosity, or translation and historicity of the Book of Abraham in the church's gospel topic and essays. And, uh, oh dear God. And so, I've been giving you more and more accurate and better information than any Egyptologist, apparently. Uh, the death of D.M. Murdoch was a bigger blow than I realized to Egyptology. Uh, D.M. Murdoch, Dorothy Murdoch, uh, if you don't know, she's the one who was figuring out, as I was at the same time, as well as Gary Greenberg, who published the 101 Myths of the Bible, all three of us were working independently on the same theory. Uh, I'm the only one who developed it into a theory. Gary Greenberg published his guess, and he made some errors. Uh, but again, it helped me connect the my uh, uh, Paleo Hebrew work to figure out the particular names that I was like. What is this name? Who is this? Uh, Gary Greenberg's book. Oh, uh, Egyptian. Oh, wow. And so that got me started into the picture glyphs connected to the Bible, uh, all at the same time period, right around 2000, 1999. And Dorothy Murdoch, uh, she focused mostly on the New Testament, so she, Gary Greenberg and I were in Old Testament, uh, and uh, she did do, did Moses exist, but uh, it's in line of, no, the whole Torah is a manufactured document, it's not historical, uh, I've corrected that in the sense that it's based on history, uh, but uh, again, yes, it's prof prophecy, it's apocalyptic, uh, but uh, she didn't understand or recognize that as she also didn't understand that the Gospels were also written as apocalyptic literature. Uh, and so it, it's sad that we lost her, 
but uh, and Gary Greenberg, he may be dead now, but uh, it's just me who's left, and uh, so you're stuck with me. I know you're all going, oh man, Travis, ah, oh, couldn't it be somebody else? We want to listen to him, oh, somebody else, not Travis. Oh man, wow. Ah. <laughs> Travis makes us feel so stupid and insecure about our own selves and our lack of doing any research. <sighs> and he condemns the Mormon church. He's got to support the Mormon church. <laughs> Again, I, it's Team Joseph Smith versus Team Brigham Young. I support Joseph, not Brigham. But, uh, you know, I, I, just, I was hoping that he would go into a, a translation, because Joseph Smith doesn't for Facsimile 3, and I just did the video giving you uh, a glimpse of the translation not too long ago not too long ago at all as uh, we also had uh, the uh, Dagon Kingfish sign in the heavens that I went over with you uh, he doesn't seem to make the connection to the signs in the heavens with the Egyptian stories uh, if he doesn't even know that, uh, I would be very disappointed with him. I'm disappointed with whatever school he went to, who hired him, or whoever gave him the, the doctorate. Alrighty. Uh, what a disgrace. <laughs>